Hey guys, it's me with our first video lesson while I'm down here. Um, letting you know that I'll be Skyping in uh, probably about 45 minutes or so. Um, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I'm not exactly sure to the minute how long um, these are going to be. Um, I can only upload 15 minute videos, so we'll probably have three videos today. Um, part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of Chapter 26. Um, chapter 25, when I Skype in, we'll discuss it. It was basically just a, a different perspective on a same time period we've already covered in the notes. So, um, chapter 25 was all about leading up to the war. Um, what caused, beginning with 1921 and ending in 1941, the United States to go from an, uh, an attitude of non-intervention, as in we are not involved at all, to an attitude of we need to intervene in this situation in the world. Um, so we'll discuss that when I Skype in, as well as we'll discuss um, this lecture today. Um, and in the meantime, um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them over the Skype session. Um, if you think of them later, feel free to email me. Um, you should all have my email address. If you don't, it's B-A-D, like B-A-D, my first and last name, first initial last name, at edenca.org. Um, so anyway, we're starting chapter 26, and this is where America gets involved in the war effort. Um, so your, your heading for right now is America in a World at War. That's the whole chapter heading. Uh, we're going to do this in two days, and then you will have your quiz on Friday on this chapter. Um, we're not having a quiz on chapter 25 because we've already covered the same material. This is just a different perspective. And this, the perspective of chapter 25 actually ties directly into chapter 26. Um, so we're not going to have a quiz on chapter 25. But make sure the reading notes that you took, um, make sure you ask me questions when we Skype today um, or over email. Um, we'll review when we uh, review for the actual AP exam, but just make sure you have um, your notes in good order. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, first thing we need to talk about is the war on two fronts, particularly the Pacific War on two fronts. So um, America, after the attack on Pearl Harbor, America went from being politically divided uh, to being very politically united. I won't say unanimous, um, but a lot of scholars and historians think that this is the one time um, in American history where pretty much everyone agreed on what we should do. There, there were some politicians who bickered back and forth a little bit, but the American populace, uh, which in this case is what really matters, the American populace was pretty united on the idea of we need a war effort uh, and we need to have it now. So there was a big push for the war effort, um, and really this unity is tested because America doesn't do all that well as, as soon as they enter the war. Um, we enter World War II late in the game. Um, our Pacific Fleet is damaged in Pearl Harbor, um, so we are essentially outgunned. Um, Japan has more working ships, more airplanes, um, and we're trying to play catch-up. Um, but what we try to do is we try to have a war on two fronts. We have the war with the Japanese and the war with the Germans, but the war with the Japanese itself contains two fronts. Um, it's a two-pronged attack. Um, so. Basically, Pearl Harbor happens, and we lose a lot of ships, um, we lose a lot of destroyers, battleships, destroyers, airplanes, um, 3,000 men are either killed or wounded, 2,000 are killed, 1,000 more are wounded, um, and then, as if that wasn't bad enough, um, three days after Pearl Harbor, we lose control of Guam, which, by the way, just to mention, Guam seems to be some kind of key position, I'm not entirely sure why, but if you noticed, we, we had talked about when Obama was inaugurated, that Russia sent a bomber capable of carrying nuclear weapons um, that circled Guam to make a statement. Um, so Pearl Harbor is hit, then Guam is hit, and we lose Guam. Um, and we lose it to Japan, obviously. Um, then other countries' possessions like Wake Island, uh, Wake Island falls, um, Hong Kong falls to the Japanese, uh, Dutch, East, Dutch East Indies, that's hard to say. Um, Singapore, Burma, Philippines, um, these all fall within a matter of months to the Japanese. Um, essentially, 
from December to May, um, so we have Pearl Harbor, December 7th, by May 6th, 1942, so essentially um, less than six months, um, all of these places I've mentioned fell to Japanese control. Um, so the American strategists basically say, okay, we need to do something about this, but they don't want to go with one straight approach. So they try a two-pronged approach to get the Japanese situation under control. Um, the first approach was under Douglas MacArthur, General MacArthur. Um, and this started in, in Australia um, and then moved north from Australia um, out toward New Guinea. And then from there, it would keep moving further and further and further to the Philippines and then eventually Japan. Um, so it, it would move to the Philippines and then eventually the goal was to meet the other prong in Japan, um, which the other prong was under General Nimitz. Uh, that's um, General, General Nimitz plays a major role. He's not very, very well covered a lot of times, um, but if you need a spelling for that, that's N-I-M-I-T-Z. Um, and General Nimitz's goal um, was basically to start in Hawaii and then move westward. So we have one prong coming here and moving eastward, and the other prong coming from Hawaii and moving westward, and their goal is to both meet in Japan so that one united force attacks Japan. Um, it, it was a long, hard battle um, for both prongs of the attack. Um, our first major victory comes May 7th, uh, well, May 7th and 8th, uh, the Battle of Coral Sea. So May 6th, we've lost all these things by May 6th that I just mentioned. And May 7th, we have a major victory. So it's kind of like a, almost a small, small beginning of the turning of the tide of the Battle of Coral Sea, um, which is just a little bit north in northwest of Australia. Um, so a month later, we have a major victory, which is the Battle of Midway. Um, Battle of Midway is, um, occurs June 3rd through 6th, 1942. Um, and we took very heavy losses, um, the American forces did, but um, it was a victory and um, it begins to slow the tide of Japan moving forward as we're kind of gaining ground back. Um, another major victory uh, is in Guadalcanal and this happens in August um, and this is on the approach that's starting from Australia, the prongs moving um, toward Japan from Australia um, and what happens is there's a very major battle. I mean, um, huge, huge number of casualties, very vicious fighting, um, and quite frankly, there are some war atrocities committed. Um, it's, it's not just uh, very intense fighting, it's very savage fighting. Um, but despite our heavy losses, and there are heavy losses on both sides, it ended up being a victory. Um, and really, this kind of seals the deal for us, the Battle of Guadalcanal. Um, we essentially, this is viewed as um, a major turning point, even more uh, of a turning point than Midway, so much so that a few months later, by, by 1943, we've basically, on this prong of the attack, we've stemmed Japan's push against us, and we're actually gaining ground, we're pushing back, and we're going on the offensive. Uh, much more aggressively um, than we had before. Uh, and this puts Japan on the defensive then. If we're on the offensive, Japan is on the defensive. Um, so as far as the Japanese front, we start really stemming the Japanese offensive in 1943. And then it's just the game of continually pushing them back, 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 back. Um, now, the German front is a different deal. Um, we don't have nearly as much control over the German front as we had um, over the Japanese front because we're cooperating with Britain and then Russia has joined as well and Russia is one of our allies. Um, we're also fighting with the Free French, uh, the Free French, the French resistance. Um, but when, when Russia joins in, it's almost the principle of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So Japan's saying, Germany's my enemy, you're Germany's enemy, so we'll fight with you. But um, really, we're not having all that great of a relationship with them. They're, um, 
very suspicious of us. Um, and we really, we give them reason to doubt our motives. But basically, um, Russia wants us to, when we enter the European front, go right across um, the English Channel and attack and start pushing Germany back from France. However, um, Britain says that's not a really good idea. Let's take care of North Africa first. And we have to weigh, what do we want to do here? Do we want to distance ourselves from Britain and rely on Russia? Or do we go with the British plan and maybe push Russia a little bit away and make them a little angry with us? So America decides to join the African campaign against Germany. They go with Britain's plan. Um, and really, Britain starts having some success. In October 1942, the British forces push the German forces out of Egypt. Um, they defend the Suez Canal, and they make a major victory there. However, Germany's response is a very vicious one. They don't want to be pushed out of Africa. They don't like losing. So they throw pretty much all of their weight against America. Um, we're in Africa. It's an unfamiliar terrain. It's an unfamiliar type of warfare we're going through there. And it's something that we really are not experienced at at all. And Germany uses that against us. We make some uh, blunders that end up costing us very heavily um, in Tanzania. So we, it looks like we're going to lose initially in the African campaign, even though Britain had made some advances. Uh, but General Patton is able to regroup, reorganize, and he makes a major push for victory. And by the middle of 1943, so May of 1943 essentially, um, we drive the Germans out of, out of Africa, out of North Africa. Uh, so we have basically rid one continent of German control. However, the Soviet Union is getting very angry at us because they wanted us initially in 1942 to invade France. And we said, we'll put it off until we get Africa under control. Well, now it's 1943, and we still have to take a lot of time to plan this offensive. And so we're stalling, and the Soviet Union... To some point, they think that we're actually doing this on purpose to inflict heavy losses on them. Um, example of why they're angry is the Battle of Stalingrad. This is a, one of the most intense examples of fighting ever in history. Um, very heavy losses. Pretty much the whole entire Russian population, the citizenry in Stalingrad that stayed, is killed. Most of them are killed. The city is pretty much destroyed. Um, in the Battle of Stalingrad. Um, some people say that, it, it's hard to tell, but as high as 90% of the soldiers that started the Battle of Stalingrad died throughout the battle. Uh, reinforcements were put in there, but the cost wasn't just high to Russia, it was cost, costly to Germany as well. Um, and it was so costly that Hitler gave up advancing into Russia after the Battle of Stalingrad. Um, throughout the war, Russia's going to lose about 20 million people. So you can see why they're getting very angry because they could have support from us, but we're not giving it to them. We're following the British and supporting the British, and we're essentially leaving them to fight Germany on the Russian front and essentially almost all of the European front by themselves. Now, to make matters worse, after we've regained control of Africa, or at least we've rid Germany of Africa now, and they're no longer a threat there, we have the opportunity to go with the Russian plan, which is to invade France and start pushing Germany back. However, we go with the new British plan, which is to invade Italy, starting with Sicily and then moving to the mainland. This is a very successful plan because by mid-1944, Italy is back in the right hands, Mussolini's government is overthrown, and the German forces that were in Italy have been pushed out. However, it's won at the cost of the trust of Russia. From this point on, they do not trust us anymore. And really, the only reason they're involved with the Allies is just to save themselves. And this is going to further embitter them against us and continue to lead down the trail to Cold War.